Hello and welcome to my morning note. There is no more important topic in the world of asset allocation at the moment than the US Treasury bond market. The bull market in Treasuries has been going on for more than three decades now. Is it about to turn? And if so, what could the ramifications be? With me now to discuss this, joining us from New York, is our US markets editor, Mike McKenzie. Mike, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Just nice to be here, John. Now, people have been betting on an end to the uh, the Treasury bull market for a very long time. You, you and I collaborated on a piece something like six years ago when, when Treasury yields yes. went up above five percent and five percent. Yes. <coughs> and in, in, in the event, what happened was that we it was, it presaged the beginning of the credit crisis. But Treasury has actually carried on on their bull run very nicely. What do you yes. see as the reasons why this incredible trend that we've seen for, for so many decades could finally be coming to an end? Well, I think what's interesting is that we have seen yields back up so far this year um, a little bit. We, we got close towards 2% early in January. We've come back to around 186 at the moment. But there's a real sense in the Treasury market of that this, this, this asset class is about to turn. And it's something that a lot of people would love to start to short. But, you know, as, as you said before mm. here, people have been burnt trying to pick the bottom in yields. Uh, but I think what's really interesting... Mm. For the, time, for the time being, you have to bet against the Fed to do that, though, don't you? You do. The Fed is essentially taking out about 90 to 90, 95% of new issuance. But you've got this really spectacular uh, equity rally underway here because for the first time since the financial crisis, the leadership of the stock market rally is being led by those economically sensitive sectors such as large cap financials, energy materials, We've got Dow Transports up nearly 9% year to date. All these sectors are telling you the economy is going to come back a lot stronger than what economists are saying. And if that's the case, mm -hmm. then I don't think the Fed's going to be doing QE for much longer. And I think in, more importantly, I think the Fed's whole idea behind QE is to keep rates low for spring to actually boost the, the traditional sort of spring right. buying and selling season for housing. And if they can achieve that and the economy really starts to pick up here, and more importantly, Washington sort of continues to down to reduce the sort of fiscal Armageddon factor, right. then I think the bond market is going to start seriously questioning how long the Fed can do QE. And as, you, as we both know, markets do start pricing in changes in Fed policy well before they actually do occur. Now, what could the effects be? We're going to take a look at a chart now which shows you the returns you're getting on Treasuries. The, the, the coupon you're earning from Treasuries is very small these days. It provides you with very little of a cushion. What happens if uh, many of those traders out there who can't remember a world when yields didn't steadily go down, what happens when people start to s lose serious money in treasuries, which is what you're predicting? What, what, what could the fallout be? Well, I mean, I think the fallout really could be, it's, it could be very interesting. I mean, the first thing to watch will be the fate of treasury auctions. How mm. strong will investor demand be for auctions? And if you start seeing the dealer community left holding more and more a bigger slice of each treasury auction, they in turn are going to turn around and start selling that. I think one of the wild cards here could be ETFs. We've seen a, a, a spectacular rise in ETFs piling into fixed income. And I think you could start to see a real sell-off occur through ETFs, which would compound the desire of money man managers to start exiting the bond market. I think treasury yields as the benchmark for all fixed income products, if they yields start to rise, you're then going to see people starting to get out of lower quality investment grade credit. Um, mm. you'll, I think you'll start to see junk bonds will probably come under a little bit of pressure, but they tend to be more closely correlated with equities, so they may be okay in the short term. I think the sell-off would probably be in two stages. You'll see an initial rise in 10-year yields above 2%, and then there'll be this sort of element, okay, what's going to happen next? And that's when I think you could potentially see a lot of asset managers say, OK, the great rotation is really underway. The economy is looking better. We need to be in stocks. We need to be in, in, in junk bonds at the expense of treasuries. It's time to start to start to move out en masse. And that's when I think you'll get a second leg of selling, which, if you think about it, we've got inflation around 2%. Right. Fair value for a 10 years should be at least 4%. OK, Mike. But the big wild card will be the Fed. OK, Mike, thank you very much indeed. That was, uh, I think, a very, very convincingly bearish case uh, on the Treasury market. One final point I'd like to make is that uh, a gentle uh, adjustment, uh, an orderly bear market in, the bon in bonds would be very good for stocks. The kind of risk that we see of a really sharp sell-off in bonds could be rather more dangerous 
for stocks in the economy.